الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وقيوم السماوات والأراضين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الصادق الوعد الأمين صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Inshallah Ta'ala, today we're inshallah going to speak about and we're going to reflect in this series of us over the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ We're going to contemplate and we're going to ponder over that verse inshallah Ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, in Surah Al-Hijr, Ayah 92 to Ayah 93. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَوَرَبِّكَ by your Lord. لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ We will ask them. And the noon in لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ has an emphasis on it. It, it has tawkid on it, an emphasis. لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ We're going to ask them أَجْمَعِينَ Each and every one of them. عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ and they're going to be asked about that which they used to do. So in that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we're going to be asked about every single action that we have done. So inshallah ta'ala, the way we're planning to ponder and contemplate over this verse is bi-idhnillah al-kareem by bringing places where we're going to be questioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in another ayah, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ If Allah willed, subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَجَعَلَهُمْ أَمَا لَجَعَلَكُمْ Allah would have made you أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Allah would have made you one nation. وَلَكِنْ بَطْ يُضِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah misguides whoever He wills. وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ and Allah guides whoever He wills. وَلَا تُسْأَلُنَّ And you will be asked, and you will be asked, and you will be asked. عَمَّا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ That which you used to do. You will be asked. Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 93. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 6, فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّا We will ask الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ The ones in which it was sent to them. وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And we will also ask the messengers. We'll also ask the messengers. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in another verse, لَا يُسْأَلُ Allah is not questioned. أَمَّا يَفْعَلُ That which he does وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ But the people and the creation are the ones who are going to be questioned. All of those verses, they have roughly the same meaning as you can see. Each verse is emphasizing the point which is that you and I are going to be questioned. And the only one who is above questioning is who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last lesson, the reflection we spoke about, the first time that the person will be questioned is in their, is in their grave. When the angels come to you, the famous hadith and Imam Ahmad narrated in his musnad, min hadithi al-bara ibn Azib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, that the angels, they will sit and they would say to the person, مَنْ رَبُّكَ Who's your Lord? And the person will respond by saying, Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the believer. فَيَقُولَانِ Then the angels will both say, مَا دِينُكَ What's your religion? And then he will respond by saying the believer, دِينِ Islam, My religion is Islam. فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ Then the two angels say to him, مَا هَذَا الرَّجُلُ الَّذِي بُعْثَ فِيكُمْ Who is this man 
who was brought out from amongst you, this messenger. فَيَقُولُ The believer will respond by saying, هُوَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ It is the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then a caller, فَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ A caller will call out فِي السَّمَاءِ From high above. And then he would say, أَنْ صَدَقَ عَبْدِي My slave has told the truth. He has uttered the truth. فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ Place for him a laying from Jannah. min al-Jannah and clothe him from Jannah. lahu baban ila al-Jannah and also open for him the gates of Jannah, the doors of Jannah. So this hadith it shows us that the believer is going to be questioned, and the same is for the the disbeliever. He will also be interrogated and he will be questioned. Also, the day of judgment, the Prophet ﷺ, he told us that the person's legs will not move from his position the day of judgment until these questions are put to them. And from those questions are, Mada kunta ta'bud? What was it that you used to worship? The person will be asked. And the second question that he will be asked the day of judgment is, Mada ajabtumul mursaleen? What did you obey from the messengers that were sent to you? And those two questions. The first question being, What was it that you were worshipping? What was it that you were worshipping? And the second question being, What did you obey from the messengers that were sent to you? Is the two parts of the testimony of La ilaha illallah. What was it that you were worshipping is what? Is La ilaha illallah. And the second question, Mada ajabtumul mursaleena is what? Wa ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. So the person has to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have to worship Allah with sincerity. And sincerity is that you do this Ibadah, this act of worship only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do not associate partners with him in it. As the poet said, Ikhlasuna lillahi saffi al-qalba min iradatin siwahu fahdhar ya fatin Ikhlasuna lillahi saffi al-qalba min iradatin siwahu fahdhar ya fatin Sincerity is, is to purify your heart. Is to clean your heart. Ikhlasuna lillahi saffi al-qalba min iradatin siwahu That you do not intend, you do not want. Through this action you're doing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be cautious of being a person whose heart is tainted. If a person gave you a cup, and the cup was unclean, it was not clean. And they told you to drink from it. Would you drink from it? If the cup was dirty, and then a person poured a cup of tea in there for you, or a cup of ju- uh, juice in there for you, would you drink it? The answer is no, it's because the utensils that we eat from and we drink from have to be clean prior to whatever is going to be put on it or put in it. And the same applies with the person who's coming with the action. Before you think of doing anything good, the heart has to be clean from everything and it has to be detached from everything else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you pray and you worship Him alone. And when you're worshipping Him, you do it with two pillars. Complete humiliation. You humble yourself completely. And you completely are in state of love for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Ibn al-Qayyim says in his Nuriya, what did he say? He said, Harabu min al-riq al-ladhi khuliqu lahu fabulu bi-riq al-nafsi wa shaytani that they ran away 
from that which they were created for. The people were created to be slaves of who? Slaves of Allah. Harabu min khuliqu lahu. They ran, they ran away for the servitude in which they were created for. And they became slaves for who? Their nafs and shaitan. You're always going to be a slave of something, regardless of whether you like it or not. The best thing to be a slave for is who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're not a slave to Allah, you become a slave to what? Your own whims and desires. And you worship yourself. Allah tells us in the Quran, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاهُمْ If they don't obey you, O Muhammad, and they don't follow your path, then what you need to know is that they are what? They are following desires. أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ He worships his own whims and desires. And after a period of time, because your heart is yearning for Allah, and your heart wants Allah, after a period of time, as the person is dwelling in the desires and the person is in it for so long, they become suicidal. And they no longer want to live anymore. And a lot of these people you see, they commit suicide. They no longer can live. Just like your body needs carbohydrates and it needs vitamin and it needs minerals, so does the heart need its creator. It needs who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it doesn't have it, just like the body dies, if it's not given the amount of carbohydrate that it needs, and the protein that it needs, and the minerals that it needs, the heart and the body will die. And so will the heart as well. So the first question that you're going to be asked is, ماذا كنت تعبد? Who are you worshipping? And the second question that you're going to be asked is, ماذا أجبتم المرسلين? Have you obeyed the messenger that was sent to you, Nabi Allah Muhammad? What did you obey him in? Did you follow him in everything? Or were you a person who picked and chose when you wanted to take him? If it was something you wanted, then you followed him. And if not, you didn't. You won't be able to answer this question. ماذا كنت تعبد? If you were worshipping besides Allah. And you will not be able to answer this question, which is, ماذا أجبتم المرسلين? You won't be able to answer it if you haven't lived by it. If you are not one who followed the Prophet والسلام, you followed him in what? Ma'rifatan, knowing who he is. Wa amalan, and also you follow him in action. والسلام, wa ta'atan, and in terms of obedience. You know who he is. Somebody asks you, what's his name? Muhammad what? You know who he is. And it's very sad, you see many Muslims today, well in Asafi Shid, it's one of the saddest things, you find many Muslims who know artists, rappers, they know musicians, in which they see as role models. They know their ins and their outs. He will tell you, this football player, how much he was bought for and how much he was sold for. And what team he's been playing for and how many years he's been... How, long, how many years he's been playing for that team? He knows it. But if you ask him about the Prophet ﷺ, he doesn't know about him. Is there really a strong answer for you the Day of Judgment regarding when you're asked, مَاذَا أَجَبْتُمُ mursaleen? Also what you're going to be asked the Day of Judgment, as the Quran tells us is, وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ that the Qur'an is a dhikr أي شرف لك ولقومك as Ibn Jarir and Imam Al-Baghawi and Qurtubi mention وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرُ لَكَ أي شرف لك the Qur'an is an honor for you Muhammad and it's a sharaf and an honor for your people but then Allah what does he say وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ and you're going to be asked about it the day of judgment so the Qur'an is from the things that we're going to be asked the Day of Judgment. We're going to be asked, did you implement the Qur'an? Were you one who lived by the Qur'an? And so if you become a person who lived by the Qur'an, the Qur'an would become for you, فَيَكُونُ حُجَّةً لَكَ It will be a proof for you. 
It's going to be a proof that's going to argue for you the day of judgment. The time when you're in the most need. Or you've forsaken the rights of the Quran. And so it becomes a what? It becomes a proof against you the day of judgment. You become a person who had boycotted the Quran. The Prophet sallallahu he says, Oh my Lord, that my people, they boycotted the Quran that was sent to them. And they've turned away from it. Ibn al-Qayyim has a great book called Al-Fawaid. It's not his Bada'i Al-Fawaid. It's another kitab which is called Al-Fawaid. It is one, only one volume. And in this book, Al-Fawaid by Ibn al-Qayyim, he speaks about what it means to boycott the Quran. It means to boycott the Quran, to boycott its knowledge. You don't know what the Quran is saying to you. If a person send you a text message on your phone, one of the first things that you're going to try to do is understand what they're trying to say to you. If you know it's an important job that you're looking for, but it's in another language, you will try to find somebody to translate it for you. And you would want to know what message they are sending you. Because it's your job, you're going to get the job. Or if they declined you and said they're not going to give you the job. The best book ever sent down is the Quran. The best book you can ever find is the Quran. And Allah is commanding you something in it and you don't want to know what is in it. The prosperity of this world and the hereafter is connected to it for you. Your joy and your happiness is connected to it. And you abandoning and turning away from it is the misery and pain and agony in which you will endure for the rest of your life. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى The person, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي The one who turns away from my Quran, the remembrance of Allah, the one who turns away from which is the Quran, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ That person will live a very hard life. In this world, you're going to live a very hard life. And on the day of judgment, the same way you turned a blind eye towards the Quran, you'll be resurrected literally blind. You turned a blind eye to the Quran. You gave no importance to it, no consideration. So the day of judgment, al jazau min jinsi al-amal. The way and the thing you deserve is for you to what? It is for you to be resurrected and brought back to life blind. And so the person says, قَالَ رَبِّ لِي مَحَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Oh my Lord, why have you resurrected me? Why have you brought me back to life blind? When I was a person in the world who could see. And then Allah says, قَالَ, كدا كدا قال كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا Like this, our verses came to you. You had eyes, you could see. Our verses came to you and you turned away from it. You chose to not look at it. You chose to not contemplate over it. You chose not to ponder over it. وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى And today you will be abandoned and left. But the one who lives by the Qur'an, عِلْمًا وَعَمَلًا وَاَعْتِقَادًا He learns about the Qur'an. He implements the Qur'an and follows the instruction that the Qur'an gives him. And he also believes in the Qur'an. He has unwavering conviction in the promises, the stories and the information in the Qur'an. He has unwavering conviction, he has yaqeen. That person is going to live a good life in this world and in the hereafter that awaits him is a good life. Allah says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُ أَجْرًا بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ This life, you're going to live a good life. Living a good life doesn't necessarily mean that you're rich. You might be qalilul yad. You might have little in your hand. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what He gives you in this world is not an indication that He loves you or hates you. What Allah gives you in this world, in terms of wealth, is no way an indication that Allah loves you no, if Allah doesn't give you something, it does not indicate that Allah hates you. Because in this world, Allah gives to who He loves and He gives to who He doesn't love. 
And he says it in the Quran, وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبُيُوتِهِمْ سُقُفًا مِنْ فِضَّةً وَمَعَارِجَ عَلَيْهَا يَظْهَرُونَ وَلِبُيُوتِهِمْ أَبْوَابًا وَسُرَرًا عَلَيْهَا يَتَّكِئُونَ وَزُخْرُفًا وَإِنْ كُلُّ ذَلِكَ لَمَّا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إعطاء الدنيوي To gain something in this world has no relationship and it has no indication that Allah loves you nor does it show that Allah hates you. You see a believer who has no children and a disbeliever who has so many kids. And this believer has been looking for kids 20, 30 years in his marriage and he's never got it. And this disbeliever, as soon as he gets married, his wife is pregnant. But the giving and the prevention is all based on love and hate the day of judgment. As Allah said in the ayah that I recited, وَالْآخِرَةُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The hereafter is only for the believers. The ones who are going to find prosperity and good in the hereafter is what? The believers. So just because you see, and this is something that happens to us Muslims, we see a person who is blessed in this world, driving a good car, he's, he's wealthy, he's well off, and it makes us leave what is most honorable for us, our capital, your Rasul Mal, your Deen, your religion, you would leave it for something Allah gave to this person in this dunya. When in reality, as I said, it has no indication that Allah loves this person or hates them. So what you're going to be asked, brothers, is the Quran. Many of us, the Quran has just become something we de decorate on our house. How many people have you visited whose houses have Ayatul Kursi on the wall? And if you ask them, read Ayatul Kursi from the top of your head, they have no, no knowledge of it, no do they know it. They've never memorized it, but it's decorated on the wall. The Quran wasn't sent for that. The Quran was sent for it to be in the hearts. Allah says in the Quran, about the Quran, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ Allah says that he sent the Quran in your heart, Muhammad. In another place, Allah says, بَلْ وَآيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي الصُّدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ That the Quran is verses that were sent down to be in the heart of the believers. The Quran was not sent down so it can be stuck on walls. It's meant to be in the heart. Look what the Prophet, when he recited the ayah, and he started to read with Jibreel. When the Quran first came down, what did Allah say to him? لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه إن ج... What does Allah mean that we're going to gather it for you, Muhammad? Meaning in your heart. There's no need for you to have to read with Jibril. The whole Quran we're going to place it what? We're going to place it in your heart. So what does it mean that we have to? Come with the Qur'an, as I said, first of all, knowledge of the Qur'an. And we know it, we memorize it, we try to give importance to the memorization of the Qur'an. And the second is the meaning and what is in it. Because the Qur'an was not sent down for you to only read it. And this is a problem that many Muslims face. They establish its wordings. But they forsake its boundaries. You see a young kid in this masjid sometimes, he's memorized the Quran, he's half of, and he's in the toilet urinating, standing up. This is a problem. This is a problem because the Quran was not sent down for you to just read it. Allah says it in many places. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا كِتَابٌ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُ آيَاتِهِ All of those places Allah is telling us that the Qur'an was sent down for you to what? To contemplate and ponder over it. And to contemplate and ponder over the Qur'an, it means that you understand what it's instructing you with. You can't ponder over something you don't understand. ولذلك عمر بن مرة ابن أبي حاتم يبرز it in his تفسير in سورة العنكبوت regarding the verse وتلك الأمثال نضربها وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس وما يعقلها إلا العالمون 
Amr ibn Murrah is a tabi'i. He said, if I, come, if I come across a verse in the Quran and I don't understand the meaning in it, bakaytu ala nafsi, I cry on myself. The reason is because Allah says, وَتِلْكَ amthal." Here are parables, examples that we give you وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا And no one truly digests it and understands it. وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ Except those who have knowledge. And when you don't understand the Qur'an, it shows you are the opposite of a person of knowledge. You're an ignorant individual. The most valuable book, you don't even know it. I ask every one of you today who's got iPhone, if you go to the settings in iPhone and you look at the apps that you use on your iPhone, they've got this process that you can do which is to go through your settings and you can look at every single app, how much time you've spent on it. Your WhatsApp, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram. You can find out how many percentage is used, being used from your phone. It'll tell you how many minutes that you've been using it for. Check how long you've spent on your Quran app. I can assure you, you'll be shocked how much time you spend on Twitter. How much time that you spend on what? Instagram. How much time that you spend on your WhatsApp. And how much you spend when it comes to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, if the Muslims today, the way they use their phone, and the way they keep their phone so close to them, if they done that with the book of Allah, I can assure you that we would not be in the situation that we're in today. فَمَنْ ضَيَّعَ الْقُرْآنَ Anyone who forsakes the Qur'an, فَلِمَا سِوَاهُ أَضْيَعَ He's verily going to forsake everything else. What value do you hold? What honor are you, do you have if you forsake and what? The thing that Allah said in it is your honor. وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ أَيْ شَرَفٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ This is where your honor lies. But you've chosen to what? You've chosen to turn away from it. So you'll be asked about the Qur'an the day of judgment. وَلِذَلِكَ I think it was Mujahid ibn Jabrin when he came to the ayah يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَوَتِي he said, أَيْ يَعْمَلُونَهُ يَعْمَلُونَ يَعْمَلُونَ بِالْقُرْآنِ حَقَّ عَمَلِهِ That they're going to implement the Qur'an the way it deserves to be implemented. And Mujahid ibn Jabrin is the man that Sufyan al-Thawri said, إِذَا جَاءَكَ تَفْسِيرُ مُجَاهِدْ فَحَسْبُكَ بِي If the tafsir of Mujahid comes to you, that's enough. You don't need to look for anyone else's tafsir. So you'll be asked about that, the Qur'an, the Day of Judgment. وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ You're going to be asked the day of judgment. Al-Imam Al-Tabarani narrated in his Mu'jam, in Hadith Anasim, that the Prophet told us that the first thing that you're going to be asked, أَوَّلُ مَا يُحَاسَبُ بِي لَعَبْدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Another narration, Tabarani's wording is, أَوَّلُ مَا يُسْأَلُ عَنْهُ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The first thing, that the person will be asked about the day of judgment when he comes is salatuhu, his prayer. That's the first thing you're going to be asked. فَيُنْضَرُ فِيهَا It will be looked into your affairs regarding the prayer. How are you as an individual when it comes to the prayer? فَإِنْ صَلَحَتْ If you pass the test and you make it through with your prayers and you come with the amount that is needed from you فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ Then you have received and gained success and prosperity. وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ If your prayer is short and you haven't met, you have not met the requirement and you've not met the amount that was needed from you. فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسِرْ Then you have truly lost and that day, wallahi, you're in a state of destruction. And it's the only day I say, brothers, that it really matters whether you pass or you fail. Every other exam that you've gone through before this can always be redone. But this day, as they say, it's crying over spilt milk. What has happened has happened. There's nothing you can do. So it's now for you to think about how you are with your prayer. The scholars are differing. Between themselves. Ta'ifa and a group of scholars are saying 
that the person who leaves the prayer is a disbeliever and leaves the fold of Al-Islam. This is a statement transmitted from Imam Ahmad, Riwayat al anhu Ishaq ibn Rahuya, Ishaq ibn Rahawiya, however you want to say it. Abu Ubaid Qasim ibn Salam. And others, they held that opinion that the person will leave the fold of Al-Islam. Abdullah ibn Shaqiq, he narrates this from that the Sahabas, this is, كَانَ الصَّحَابَةُ لَا يَرَوْنَ شَيْءًا تَرْكُوا كُفْرًا غَيْرَ الصَّلَاهِ That the Sahabas never used to see something that if a person left, they will become a disbeliever other than the prayer. Abdullah ibn Shaqiq, he brings that from them. And he's a tabi'i. So you're in a situation where some of the scholars, whether it is a correct view or not, the point is, it's a dangerous matter. It is the only action that the difference regarding whether you become a disbeliever or not is very strong. It's something that should scare you. That the day of judgment, the Prophet said in a hadith, the person who leaves the prayer, the day of judgment, يُبْعَثُ مَعَ قَارُونَ وَهَامَانَ وَأُبَيُّ بْنُ The one who left the prayer, he will come the day of judgment. He has no hujja, no burhan, no proof, no evidences. And he will be resurrected with Fir'aun, Qarun, Haman, and Ubay ibn Khalaf. The Prophet said this, alayhi salatu salam. You will be resurrected with Saladid, the heads of Kufr. Because you left the prayer. You are like Shaytan who refused to prostrate to his Lord when he commanded him. He refused to prostrate to his Lord. And you, as Imam Ahmed said this, you've refused to prostrate to your Lord. You left prostrating to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you'll be asked about your prayer the day of judgment. And guess what, brothers? It is the first thing you'll be asked about the day of judgment. The first question. There's nothing else Allah will look at. أول ما يسأل عنه العبد عبد يوم القيامة. It is the first thing that the slave will be asked about the day of judgment is his prayer. If you get your prayer in line and your prayers are good, then you make it through everything else, brothers and sisters. And if your prayer is short and you have not met the required amount from you, فقد خاب وخسر destruction and losses for you that day. So you'll be asked about it the day of judgment. What you're also going to be asked, brothers, is your age and your life, what you spent. And Imam Al-Tabara Tirmidhi narrated in the hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet said لا تزول قدم ابن آدم that a person's legs will not move يوم القيامة the day of judgment من عند ربه in front of his Lord I mean, besides his Lord the person's legs will not move from his position that day حتى يسأل عن خمس until he's asked about five questions these are five questions that you're going to be asked. The first of those five is عن عمره your age. فيما أثناء what did you spend your age with? You've been living for 30 years. 20 years Allah gave you a chance to live in this world. What did you do for those 20 years? How have you spent it? Was it lahu wal Were you laughing and you were playing? Or was it jid and ijtihad? You were striving, working hard. You'll be asked about it. Seconds you'll be asked. And the beauty about it all is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every time he, he does something to remind you that your time is close. And from the things that Allah does subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he brings white hair into your bed or your head to tell you you're coming closer every time. That's why Allah said in the Quran, أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّرْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرْ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Abdullah ibn Abbas said, the nadir is the white beard. The warner came to you. The white hair is the warner that came to tell you your time is over. You're coming. There was a time when your, white, your beard was black. Your hair was black. And now you're starting to see don't say I'm young. Don't say, no, this hair just stress. All of this is you fooling yourself and lying to yourself. The truth is, you're closer and closer to your grave. People are celebrating the New Year's. 
That's a year gone by that you're closer to your grave. Are you celebrating your time closer to the grave? Or should it be something you're scared of? People celebrate their birthdays. What are you going to celebrate? That you're getting closer to your grave? That time has gone by? So you're going to be asked the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to you, Did we not leave, give you time to live? Did we not give you an age? Did we not give you a time for you to ponder, to say to yourself, you know what, I've misbehaved for a portion of my life. Five years I was misbehaving, ten years I was misbehaving. Now I need to be sensible. Now I need to be appropriate. Now I need to be in line. And then you still didn't. And then Allah sent a warner to you. And you know, some, the warner comes in different forms and shapes. Sometimes it's the white beard. Even sometimes, fulan. Do you remember Fulan? Yeah, he's gone, he died. And what about Fulan? He's died. And Fulan, he died. All of those is a sign for you. The angel is telling you that I'm coming closer and closer to you. The people you knew, I've knocked them down. I've taken them. They don't know, they're not, they're, they are no longer alive. I am now heading towards you. They say, even though, though it may not be a reality, the story, but the meaning is correct. That a man, the angel of death came to him. When the angel of death came to him, he said to the angel of death, how dare you just walk up and come to me like this without telling me or giving me any signs that you're coming. Get away from me and tell me when you're coming. The angel of death said, I promise. A period of time went by. And so the angel of death came back to the man. When he came to visit him, and he came to see him, he said to the angel of death, again, you're going to come? Didn't I tell you to when you're coming, you give me a sign that you're coming? You don't just walk up on me like that. He said, yes, I gave you many signs. He said, what signs have you given me? He said, where's your neighbor on the left? He said, he's dead. What about the one on the right? He said, he's dead, dead. He says, where's your wife? She's dead. Where's your oldest son? He's dead. All of those people I took down, they were your shields in front of you. Now that they are gone, who else do you want me to go for? You're the only person left. And then when other people die and you take people to the graves, this person has got, he's received what it was promised for him. But the true lesson lies in for you. It's a wake-up call for you. It's you who has to think here. And then the hadith mentions وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِي You're going to be asked Look at the hadith It mentions that you're going to be asked about your life And then within your life you get asked specifically your shabab You know why brothers? Why is it shabab is mentioned independent from عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَاهِ عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِي مَا Why is shabab specifically mentioned? The reason is because marhalatu shabab two khasla, two characteristics have gathered in you that makes it a greater reason for you to be asked. What is it? Al-quwa wa You had strength and you had health. The third khasla Ibn Qayyim adds to it is al-faraq, free time. And the Prophet said in the hadith, Al-Mu'min Al-Qawi Khayr wa Ahabbu ila Allah min Al-Mu'min Al-Da'if wa fi kulli khayr. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uka wa sta'in billah wa la ta'jaz. Oh, kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. That the strong believer is more beloved to Allah than what? The weak believer. But both of them are good. What does it mean? Al-Mu'min Al-Qawi Khayr wa Ahabbu ila Allah min Al-Mu'min Al-Da'if. Some of the ulama they said Al Mu'min Qawi here means the sharp. Why is it? Because he is the one who has physical and his iman is strong. Ni'matani maghbunu fihima kathiru min al nas. Two blessings many people are heedless about. As sihatu wal farah. Health and free time. Those three. Quwa. 
siha and farah, three blessings, they all combine inside the youth. Look at you right now, brothers. You, you left your house, walked out. You didn't have to explain yourself to anybody. You just, you had the time to come over and you could sit and just listen to a lecture, go when you want to go, wake up whatever time you want to wake up. You've got that free time. You've got health. Look at your parents. They keep complaining about their back, their arm, their shoulder, their this. You don't complain about that, alhamdulillah, health. You have quwa, strength. All of that has made it more of a reason for you to be asked about that marhala, that age. Wallahi, brothers, it's a blessing Allah has given you. Quwa to shabab. وَلِذَلِكَ The woman who wanted to marry or the father, the righteous man who wanted to marry his daughter off to Nabi Lahi Musa. Some people they say Shu'aib like you know Laya Sihra. Sahib Madian. Some people say Shu'aib but it's not authentically transmitted that it's Shu'aib. The point is that when he came to Nabi Lahi Nabi Lahi Musa when he came to this righteous man the daughter what did she say to her father? She said, Ya Abati Sta'jiru, Father, Haya Musa, Inna Khayra Manista Jarta Al Qawi, Al Amin. Father, Haya him, Musa. Why? He's Qawi. How is he Qawi? And the Nabi like Musa was what? Sharp. He was a youth. And he was a reliable individual. Are we all together, brothers? So, Marhala to Shabab is a blessing it's the time in your life where all of the good is in you and that's why you will deserve the day of judgment to receive the shade of Allah because with the strength with the free time and with the health there's one thing that covers all of that and makes you not benefit from it which is a shahwa and if the person gains control over these desires and he uses those three advantages that he has in the obedience of Allah. The day of judgment, he will receive a shade. <coughs> Are we all together? That's why the Prophet said, Seven, Allah is going to give them a shade. The day when there is no shade. From them is who? Shabun Allah, Who grew up and was nurtured and was upright in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we all together brothers? So you're going to be asked the day of judgment about this age that you have. The marhala to shabab. You're going to be questioned about it and benefit from it brothers. Benefit from this. Also, Your money. You're going to all be asked where did you get this money from? Did you get it from drugs? Did you get it from alcohol? Where did you earn this money from? Who gave it to you? Wallahi, penny will be questioned the day of judgment. Not a pound, not five pounds. You're going to be questioned pennies, pennies. Where did this penny come from? And where did you spend it? Where did you? When you got halal money, you're going to be asked the day of judgment, where did you spend it? It is sad that we've reached a level that the minds cannot even comprehend. The other day, I go through my local area, I try to go to the youths in where they are. I try to go to them where they are, where they sit. If I see a group of Muslims Somalis or whatever they may be sitting together in a place I always try to approach them whether it be in the park whether it be on the corner of the streets I try to go to them and I try to have a dialogue and a discussion with them what hurts the most and breaks the heart and brings them an old man to tears is when you see the young kids some of them as young as 16, 17 Wallahi some even younger than that who are drinking alcohol. Back many years ago, when they first started doing this, they used to hide it. They used to carry that brown bag 
hide it or they would pour it inside a coca-cola bag a coca-cola can or whatever a bottle of and they would change it and you think they're drinking coca-cola right now they do it right in your face they don't hide it and the kind of alcohol that they drink is the worst alcohol the white people the kuffar who don't believe in Allah and all the day of judgment it's the one that they have one sip of the two our young kids, they've got a bottle and drink it like it's water. They drink it like it's water. Do you not think that the day of judgment you're going to be asked? Don't you think you're going to be questioned? All of this which you're taking, it's a sad reality, wallah. It's so sad that subhanAllah on social media, you see Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, them coming out, recording themselves doing this. They put it on social media. I know their father, Fulan and Alan, that's their father. He's in the front row in the masjid. Or he's praying in the masjid. It's a big problem. The day of judgment is questions. People will be asked the day of judgment. Money. Some kids are buying drugs, they're making money from drugs and they're paying their parents rent. They're taking that money from their kids And the child thinks in his mind and heart That he's doing something for his parents So when you ask him, what are you doing? He's like, my mom needs me man My dad needs me My mom's a single mother, I give her money So the money that's taken from haram Is imported what? It's imported into a house, food وَمَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ your wealth, where did you gain it from? And where did you spend it? وَمَادَ عَمِلَ فِي مَا عَلِمْ وَمَادَ عَمِلَ And the knowledge that you've attained, have you implemented it? That knowledge you have, you will be questioned the Day of Judgment regarding it. Also, what you're going to be asked the Day of Judgment is your seeing, your hearing, your tongue, your heart. You're going to be asked about all of them. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ in the sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu dhalika kana anhu mas'ula kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula wa la taqfu ma laysa laka bihi ilmun in the sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula all of them you're going to be questioned what did you look at if you look at the first problem that everybody goes through which they can't stop the chain of problems that come from is one of these what you looked at stop looking at what you're looking at also what you're listening to the prophet والسلام, when he prohibited music and he called it sawtani mal'unani two types of sounds are cursed you have to realize it was a music far better than the music that we are seeing today. That music which the Prophet referred to as haram and he said it's a cursed music. It was at the Prophet's time. Imagine this music today where if you hear the lyrics, the words, insults, insults, filthy language. The videos that come with it The matter becomes even worse. وَلِذَلِكْ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ مَسْعُودٍ said إِنَّ الْغِنَى يُنْبِتُ فِي الْقَلْبِ النِّفَاقِ That music, it's what brings in the heart hypocrisy. That a person lives double life. This brother that you know is in the masjid praying with the people, fasting, doing khayr. But when he goes outside, he's doing something else. He lives a double life. On social media, he's something else. But in the real world, he's something else. Do you know what's making him do that? Music. Wallahi, I have not seen anyone who listened to music except he is as Allah said about them in the Quran, about the munafiqeen. What did he say? He said about them, لا يأتون الصلاة إلا وهم كسالة. They don't come to the prayer except that they're lazy. The brothers are. <coughs> Look at the prayer, the youngsters who listen to music. The reason why they feel lazy It's because of music. Because hypocrisy enters your heart. It's impossible that the... You know what music is called? 
is ruqi shaytan it's the ruqi of shaytan and the quran which is the ruqi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they both can't enter one heart can they can fire and water be in the same heart at the same time simultaneously Abba allah allah refused that subhanahu wa ta'ala one has to be god and the other one has to go follow this up and watch what i say brothers any Ibn Qayyim says something powerful. He says, music is what made girls who are chast take their hijabs off. Ibn Qayyim said that. And come on the street and do prostitution. When we say prostitution, I don't mean she makes money out of it. She becomes a woman who every guy is sleeping with her. The same with the guy. Ibn Qayyim said, a society whose zina increases in and homosexuality increases in is when music is brought to them. Homosexuality increases in them. Are we all together, brothers? And zina increases in a society where what? I'm saying the music Ibn Qayyim is talking about is nothing like the one we're talking about today. Always keep that in mind. Always keep that in mind. It's much worse now. Now they're clearly telling you do this zina. The rap is telling you I do this zina. I did this to this woman. And he's telling you. Rather some of the people who've come into the scene. These artists. Some of them. They came and they became famous through what? Zina. Fulana and Fulan only became known because of a video or a, uh, a sex tape that leaked. The Muslim girl. Fatima. Zahra. Amina, Aisha, that you see is looking up to this fakira, this woman who became famous through what? A sex video. Look how much. وَلِذَلِكَ Allah said in the Quran, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجْلِكَ وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا يَعِدْهُمْ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُوَا Allah tells Iblis, when he kicked him out of Jannah, and he told him to leave Jannah, Allah says to him, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكِ Any individual, any individual, you want, use your voice to misguide them. The Mufassirin, scholars of Tafsir, they said that the voice that shaitan is going to use to misguide the people is music. That's the voice he's using. What you're hearing is that, Wallahi, when you, when you stop listening to music, and you stop letting your ears hear it, is when your heart is going to realize that you feel alive. You're going to feel alive. And that's why the person who listens to music on the tongue of the messenger is cursed. Sawtani, mal'unani. Two types of people are cursed. Two sounds are cursed. Sawtun inda al A sawt, which is music, when the person is enjoying themselves. And this next one is brothers. Sawtun, a sawt. When the person is going through hardship, calamity, the wailing that the person does. But in the Prophet told us that the people who listen to music and are musicians and rappers are now singers, Allah is going to deform them. He's going to make them into pigs and monkeys. Look at it today. Look at the rappers that the people are watching today. They become animals. Recently, one guy came out, what's his name? Remind me, remind me. He all, he made a track and he, with one music that he made, what did he make? He just went up, he became platinum. What was it again? Just one, huh? Lebes, you know, we know, you know it. Uh, don't act like companions. Yeah? Panda. Was it, the music was it called Panda or was his name called Panda? Huh? Is it Panda? Huh? It's Panda, right? Don't worry, don't worry. Your dads are not here and they're not going to say anything. <laughs> huh? If you li- Brothers, pay attention to this. If you look at him as a person, brothers show me, they show me. As a person, just look at him. Wallahi, billahi, tallahi. I will show the uncles, inshallah. He is deformed. He is mentally tapped. You will never think to yourself that this person is fa'numun. Wallahi, he's mental. And he's what he became number one. 
This is what they look up to. The thing is a joke. The reality is that it's a joke. Not even those who are listening to understand what the guy is saying. They don't know what he's saying. Wallahi, they listen to music, they don't know what he's saying. He's screaming on the whole music. No one knows what his lyrics are and what he's saying. Am I lying, brothers? Be honest. Yeah? He had to do an interview to tell the people the logic behind his music and why he was say- and what he was trying to say. And he said, Eric, am I lying, brothers? Huh? That's the reality. It's reached that level of hamaka that it's become that sad and that pro- So the day of judgment, ala kulli hal, you will be asked about what you listen to, what you watch. And what you listen to is the channel that goes towards, towards your heart. What you see is what goes towards your heart. Are you with me, brothers? Well, the Sharia told us to lower our gaze. And it told us what we can listen to and what we can't listen to. Because all of these things are going towards your heart. And once it goes towards your heart, The person listens to music, the lyrics starts coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in. He sees these things, it, he becomes desensitized, and then that's it. All he now looks for is fulfilling his shahwa and his desires. One of the, the things that you're going to be asked the Day of Judgment, and it's the final one, is كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَرْرَعْيَتِ Everybody's going to be asked about the responsibility that they've been placed over them. Fathers are going to be asked about their children. Fathers are going to be asked about their children. Fathers. And they're going to be, mothers are going to be asked. Wallahi, if you take a child person and you tie them from the back and you throw him into the sea and then you say to him, Iyaka, Iyaka, and tabtalla bil ma'i. You tie a person from the back and you tie them from the legs and then you say to them, hey, be careful, don't let the water touch you. Is that possible? And you throw them into the sea. The parents who brought their children into this society and this environment who are telling their children, you need to be, be you need to behave yourself. This method, this example is what rely is the reality on them. And we all together. When you throw your child into this society and then you say, Oh, don't act like Chris or Michael. Be like Abu Bakr and Umar. It's very hard to say that. Unless. You've changed the whole atmosphere for him. And you've created a new atmosphere for him. And we all together. And how can that be done? It can be done. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said to Musa and Harun, وَجَعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبَلَ Make your houses qibla. What's qibla? It means a place Allah is remembered. Make your houses a place Allah is remembered. Wallahi, imagine your child is outside at school six hours as a child. Little, little kid, little kid. Little kid. And the child, six hours he spends outside. He comes home. You don't even talk to him. You say, eat, sleep, go, wake up, go to school again. Wake up, sleep, wake up. Ten years go by. You really think this is your child? Yeah, he's your child physically. But mentally, he's what? Now when social workers come, well one thing my dad used to say a lot, he says this a lot, he used to say, why are you upset when the social services come to take your kids? They raised the child. They nurtured the child. It's their child. They educated him. They paid for his education. They may even pay they may have even paid for his food and his housing. They paid for everything. They've just taken their child back. <laughs> the child is only yours by name. It's a problem, it's a reality. Are we all together? So one of the things I believe my father, my father, he did was very good. Which is every day before we went to school, before we left the house, before we left, we prayed Fajr in the house. One of my brothers would lead. My father would pray behind us. As soon as he finishes, my mom would go into the kitchen and she would prepare the food. And my dad would sit down and he would talk to us. Until the food gets ready, we eat. Then we dress up, we go to school. Who has, from the first stage before I go to school, fresh when the mind is 
who's taking the person, who's taking the mind? Ah, oh, my father. He's putting the first information into my heart and my mind as soon as I woke up. I went together. And then as soon as I come from school, the Ma'alim Quran al Mashkali is waiting for me. So he's pouring out, the Quran teacher is waiting for me at home. He's going to pour everything out which was wrong. And he's going to pour in my head everything that's what? That's right. In a society, if you make, if you take care of your child like that, inshallah ta'ala, a lot of khair will come from you. They've spent six hours on your child, you need to spend 12 hours. Are we all together? But you bring a 52 inch plasma television, one thing we never had in our house, never, was television. We never ever had television in our houses. My dad never brought television to the house. Six hours they took you, and then another, inside the house they're going to take you again. Are we all together? What is it called? Tele vision. They're programming you. You can't think for yourself. The whole point is that they have control over you. Do you not see that this post colonial media outlet that we have, that the media only lets out everything around us, it's perpetrating that one concept, it's only one thing that's been said to us. BBC. Muslims are like this, Muslims do this, Muslims... These people... Islam is a big religion. Why is those four questions? What do you be, believe about women's rights? What do you guys believe about this? Four questions all the time. Are we all together? Think about it. Are we all together? No, the whole fiqh, hakam, salah, and zakat, and som, and hajj. Kitab al-Tahar is one of the biggest chapters, right? Why do you ask the Christian about Tahar? Why is my religion restricted to four questions? Five questions that you was always want to ask to show you that they have the ability to do that, right? So it's being programmed. Are we all together? Before they bring the person into the... Before, the, before they bring you into the um, television or they bring you on the radio. I, watch, I listen to LBC sometimes. And sometimes they talk about topics which are very tough. So then a person calls in and he wants to speak on the LBC and he wants to... He wants to convey his message. First of all, you've lost from the get-go. You know why? Because before they let you in, they'll talk about ISIS and this is what ISIS believe in. Okay, we have on the studio Ahmed. Ahmed, tafaddal. What happened? Your speaker is very low. Your voice is very low. The studio voice is very high. Are we all together? So the, everything is about programming the people. And the message is only being directed towards one way. So the way that we can always win, brothers, is that we have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know what the topic today was about. We're going to ask them about the Mursaleen. And the ayah that we started, which is, Everybody's going to be questioned in the day of judgment. And those were some points that I could think of that we will be questioning the Day of Judgment. Today I went very long, right? You know why? Because we missed last lesson. So we made it one hour today. 50? Uh, no. 30 or 30, right? An hour is 60 minutes, right? So it's 30 or 30, the heart. That's how it is, inshallah ta'ala. Subhan, if I said anything wrong, it's from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi